I'm live. The Hangout is live. I hope the God this records this time. Okay, so welcome to Making Art, Making Money. Today we're going to go over the eight realms of making art and making money. And we have Kate Bradley from Memphis, Tennessee. Say hi, Kate. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so experience with these realms and is going to provide help provide some examples. Um, so these eight realms are the same eight realms that I I um, mastered and teach other artists from all over the globe to master. Everyone is looking for a roadmap. So most people who are creative think the first place they need to start is to find their niche market or to put up their website or. They have business cards printed, and that is not correct. <laughs> right, Kate? Right. <laughs> no, no, no. That would be putting the cart before the horse, as I'm famous for saying. And uh, <laughs> there's a recipe to building a profitable fine art enterprise, just like there's a basic recipe for baking a cake or for building a house. And of course, every recipe is different, and... Um, Every cake tastes uh, differently, and every house looks different. But the important thing is that you follow a sequence. You don't want to put the roof on before you lay the foundation, and you don't want to frost the cake before you mix the batter. So it's the same thing with fine art enterprise. But they don't teach this in art school, and um, they don't teach this in business school either. So the first realm is visioning, and that is um, the first realm where you really identify who you are and what you stand for as a person and as an artist. It's, visioning is also where you define your mission. So Kate, what, what's your mission? Can you give us an example of what a mission is? Yeah, so my mission is to help families celebrate their relationships with their children through my art. Okay, and how do you, how, um, I guess we'll, oh well, we'll go. We'll, we'll wait and move into the next space. So, so this is this is a perfect example. This comes from Kate's experience, and um, this comes from her personal experience and her perspective on life. And so, um, and if you you can you can learn a little bit more about this in an interview I did with Kate at MakingArtMakingMoney.com. But we're going to move on to the next realm called visioning. But before we do that, at each one of these sections, I'm going to make a book recommendation. This is actually my reading list. These are the books that are in my library that helped inspire this eight-part methodology. So the book that I have all of the artists I mentor read is Man's Search for Meaning called by Viktor Frankl. Remember that one, Kate? Did you read that one? Actually, I did not read that one. Oh, but no, but you're going to read that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to read that <laughs> So that's pretty timeless. And uh, so that's, that's really, really a key place to start. The next realm is called valuing. And valuing is where you define your blue ocean strategy. Where you, in other words, where you define your unique value proposition and the target market that it will serve. And um, what's your unique value proposition? What do you do that's different from all other portrait painters out there, Kate? Well, I specialize in painting children, and I capture their essence in the context of their individuality and their personality and their interests. Okay. All right. So that's and that's unique from a lot of portrait painters who just sort of um, have their the context that's that's you know interesting to them, or um, they may paint all all human beings. But Kate really does specialize in children, and they have a different anatomy, and they have a a different light in their eyes, and that takes some skill to capture that that youthful look. So that's Kate's unique value proposition. And what target market does it serve? Who do you who's your who's your target market? I serve a affluent stay-at-home mother. Right. And you, you even have a, a description for your ideal customer avatar. You even gave her a name and made a cardboard cutout of her so you'd be really clear on who you're targeting. It's like an FBI profile, right? That's, that's how targeted it is. You know, 
you know what she wears, you know where she hangs out, you know who her friends are, where she goes to church, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's so Kate's really mastered the valuing realm, the second realm, and the book that I recommend that you read to get a greater understanding of how to eliminate the competition, which is is what Kate's done, and make, basically by making them irrelevant, by creating additional value, is to read the Blue Ocean Strategy. So the third realm is called dealing, and that's really just, well, that's great, you've got a mission, that's great, you've got a unique value proposition. The question now that has to be answered is how are you gonna make money? And um, you have to understand how you're gonna do that in a clear and concise way. One thing that I like to say about a business plan is it's not a road map, it's a compass. And you have to constantly refer to it to make sure that you're on track to make the amount of money that you plan to generate in a given year. You are executing on the strategies um, that you defined in your business plan. And um, there is a great book that helps you outline it in a clear, concise way called The One Page Business Plan. So Kate, do you have a business plan? I do. You do, and if you don't mind, would you mind sharing? You, you've got a business plan that defines how you're gonna ger generate an estimated sales of what number this year? $100,000. Right, so this is plan is a really, it's, it's, a clear, it's a clear vision and outline of how you're gonna meet that, meet that, that goal, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next realm. The next realm, the fourth realm, is copywriting. And copywriting is really important because copywriting, co your copyright, first of all, what is copyright? So copyright is really simply the right to copy. It reproduces in any way, shape, or form what, what has been created by the author. The author is you. So if you've authored something, whether it's a painting or a poem or a song, you're the author and no one has the right to reproduce it without your written permission. Now, there is a, there's an office in the United States called the Copyright Office and if you register your what you've authored with them, your protections are much, much better than if you don't. And so um, a lot of people get really mystified by this, but it's actually pretty simple to, reg to register your copyright. You can do it in a series. It's not that expensive and it's not that complicated, but a lot of attorneys have us, well, let's just say they complicate to profit. So <laughs> not that hard. Even I, even I can do it. Uh, but, but if you're looking for some guidance on this, um, besides the copyright, um, gov website that has a frequently asked questions section. It also has copyright basics. A book I recommend is um, by Nolo Press and it's um, patent, copyright, and trademark and intellectual property. It's not something you're going to read cover to cover. It'll just go to the sections that relate to you. Okay. <laughs> so um, the fifth realm is targeting and targeting is really um, what we referred to briefly um, with Kate, she has a tribe that are affluent stay-at-home mothers. And um, she recognizes that tribe because she knows their customs, she knows their ceremonies. Their ceremonies are, let's see, in your case, their ceremonies are playing tennis at the club, country club, mm -hmm. right? Another ceremony might be a uh, dinner party Mm -hmm. uh, another ceremony might be going to church on Sunday mm -hmm. in Tennessee, right? Uh, your tribe reads, what's the magazine that I love the name of? Garden and Gun. Garden and Gun! They read Garden and Gun. <laughs> you know, moms in San Francisco, I assure you, the tribe of affluent mothers here in San Francisco do not read Garden and Gun. They have probably never even heard of Garden and Gun. <laughs> they read Slate magazine. They read mm -hmm. The New Yorker. Um, you know, they read <laughs> Atlantic Monthly. So it's just really fascinating. Yeah. There's no right or wrong in this. It just it just shows you how like attracts like, and we tend to um, 
you know, hang out with our tribe. So a book that I recommend around understanding targeting and understanding um, target markets, which is every, which is all artists are all keen to find their target market. But they have to they have to complete these first four steps. But that book is by Seth Godin, who is a marketing hero of mine, and he wrote a book called Tribes. So I recommend that. Okay, selling. Selling. Everyone gets, um, I hear the gag reflexes. I hear people, um, I feel people like getting really uncomfortable with the word selling, but it's, it's kind of important. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of need it. <laughs> so I guess, Kate, what was your initial um, impression of what selling meant when you and I first started working together? What did you think selling meant or what came up for you? How would you describe selling when, when we first started talking about it? I thought of it as real, a really uncomfortable exchange with someone else. You're trying to like, you know, pull the wool over their eyes and, and <laughs> yeah, try to coerce them to buy whatever it is you're selling and I didn't have any confidence either and so Right. Just a terrible combination. Yeah. So a lack of um, real knowledge and a lack of confidence is pretty lethal. It's probably going to undermine your your efforts to sell. So I think um, it's certainly uh, less, selling is not effective if you try to manipulate uh, mm -hmm. or pull the wool over someone's eyes because people aren't stupid. It'll actually have the opposite effect. So it's not true at all. Um, the fact is, is that to sell is, is human. We all sell. We're selling all the time. Selling is just having a guided conversation. It's really no more and no less than that. And so a book that I recommend to everyone is a book called To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. <laughs> um, so what's your, what's your experience of selling now, Kate? Is it manipulating and, and um, uh, you know, being unethical? Is that what it is? Not at all. It is um, much more, it's just deciding if, if what I do can help somebody else, and that's really it. And sometimes it can, and sometimes it can't. Right, right. And so I guess the other question I have for you is, um, are, you, are you less attached to the outcome? Like, let's say someone expresses interest in working with you and commissioning you. Um, are you less attached now than you were before? Yes. I still get nervous. I still want to make as many sales as I can, but I don't, it's not life or death. You know, the, my future does not hinge on whether this person wants to commission me or not. So yeah, and that inspires, that projects confidence. Right, because you have a number of prospects that are either in your pipeline or are coming your way because you receive a lot of referrals. So there's a a famous quote, I don't know who to credit, it's like, it goes, some will, some won't, so what next? Yes, there's always more, yeah, you just right. keep going. There's, a, there's, always, there, there's always more if you're on a mission, there's always more if you have a unique value proposition that's eliminating the competition, there's mm -hmm. always more if you have a target market that you serve and you know where to find them, then there's always more, but you have to complete these other, you have to really master these other realms before you can master the realm of selling. Right. So this is a big one for a lot of people. It's very charged and it doesn't need to be if you educate yourself and practice. Okay, let's go to the seventh realm. So seventh realm is simple, is called profiting, which is nice. We like that part. All it is is more money is coming in than it's going out. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all profit beans. And, um, of course, it gets sliced and diced into lots of different categories for, for, your, for your own purposes and for the IRS, but that's essentially all it is. So one book that I recommend for that is this really hokey book. <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh out loud. I actually got the audio version, but I just would laugh because I just thought it was so goofy. But it was goofy. <laughs> Principles really and really basic and easy to understand. Yes. Okay, Kate knows what I'm talking about. The richest man in Babylon. Yes. Yeah. So put, 
<laughs> like candle the- traders and <laughs> one is making a chariot, but he has no yeah. <laughs> he has no shackles. Is it shack? No, what's it called? Well, whatever the name of the yeah. coin. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's hilarious. Got to read that book. Okay. Um, so then, uh, I, let, me, let me just check in with you. So, Kate, what's your what's your relationship with money now? As it what as um, in contrast to where it was, let's say six months or a year ago. It's different. Um, I used to think that money in itself was bad, and it would be. It was in a way, I, I think I carried around some feelings that it was wrong to have a lot of money. And um, yeah, my views on it have really changed since then. So is it is it bad to have a lot of money? No. No. <laughs> Pretty neutral, right? It's like a hammer. You can use a hammer to um, build something, or you can use it to whack somebody up the side the head, really. It's pretty neutral. Yeah. There are... Uh, there's a, I think it's Joseph Campbell who says that money is congealed energy, and I like to say that money is precisely congealed energy. It's just, it's that's all it is. It's just this. It's really made up. We've all agreed that mm-hmm. it's going to be this um, exchange. You know, it's going to represent an exchange of value. And uh, so, yeah, if you want to make art and make money, you really do have to examine your relationship with money, or you'll just be making art. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> All right, so then the eighth realm um, is accomplishing, and that's where you s- commit to a smarter goal and um, and reach it. And a book that I recommend for this is a basic, timeless book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And Napoleon Hill um, delves into the um, creation of a fixed and certain goal and repeating that goal and evaluating that goal and working towards that goal. And that's exactly what I did. My first year in business in 2005, I moved to San Francisco to paint for a living. I don't recommend anyone do that, by the way. That was really bold. Um, <laughs> and the goal was to generate over $100,000 in, in the sale of my paintings, which I actually exceeded. And um, so I had this very specific goal, and I was able to work towards it. So um, let me just check in with you, Kate. What, how, how's it been to have um, a smarter goal to to focus on? It it it's everything because you can't you don't you won't reach anything if you don't know where it is you're where you're going and when you're going to get there and what specifically you need to do to get there. It's all just too vague and you'll never take any action on it or anything. Right. So an analogy that I like to use is, you know, if you set your goals and they're not, if they're not defined well, they might be something like, I'm in San Francisco and I want to travel. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're mm-hmm. probably not going to act on that anytime soon. You're probably not going to wind up in, a, in another city anytime soon. If you say something like, um, I'm in San Francisco and I want to be in New York City on July 4th, 2014, now you can start to mobilize your energy and your forces and make some decisions and buy the plane tickets and get a hotel reservation and act. So you can't really act towards any um, anything specific without it. So just real briefly, I'm going to, SMARTER is an acronym. S stands for specific. M is measurable, A is actionable, which means you can take action on today, not a year from now. Uh, R stands for result, and T is for time bound, and E is for evaluate and revise if necessary. And you don't want to, you want to evaluate your goal, but you don't, when I said we don't want to revise it because you're lacking commitment, you want to write, only revise it if it's actually smarter to revise it. Okay. So. These are the eight realms and of making art and making money. And I guess, Kate, I'm just curious, um, do you have any, do you have like one piece of parting advice for other artists who are maybe new to this whole concept of making art and making money and, and following these eight realms? What, what would you say to them? I would, what would say. You, actually, what would you say to the young Kate who just graduated? <laughs> 
art school? Uh, I would say that if you have the discipline and the commitment to be an artist, be a good artist, and learn your craft well, because that, that takes it takes years, it takes so much time. Then the business stuff, I mean, it's it's easy in comparison in a lot of ways. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think I think artists just don't. I for a long, I never saw my, I never thought of myself as a business person or an entrepreneur, and I know a lot of artists don't see themselves that way. But all it is is just acquiring a certain set of skills the same way you did when you learned how to paint or draw or whatever it is, and that are easier to get, and um, and that you can do it. It's very doable. Right. Yeah. Well. Well. Well said. The you know to be able to paint well or to um, write a moving song or uh, craft an amazing piece of jewelry um, requires a lot of skill. It requires a lot of experience and it creative talent. And um, certainly entrepreneurs are, are incredibly creative. The ones who are very successful. So that's something that um, is an advantage to be creative. You actually the most successful entrepreneurs are very creative. But anyway, being a business person, yeah, exactly what you said. Those skills can be acquired, um, and it does take some time. It's not like it happens overnight. So the the, <laughs> the mistake is that a lot of artists think they just need to throw up a website, right? Or they just need to do a few events, or they need to get representation. Right. But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. All right, well, yeah. this is great. So um, I guess one thing I want to leave you all with is a, a quote from a poet. I'm big on quotes, so love quotes. Um, I can't read the poet's name now. But anyway, let me just leave you with the quote. The quote is, knowledge is power, but enthusiasm pulls the switch. So I would encourage you to get this library and study these principles and equip yourself with that with that knowledge because that's the power that will help you make art and make money. And thank you Kate for tuning in. Thanks Anne. All right, let's see if I can hit record this time. <laughs> <laughs>